In this video, we're going to take a look at the configuration of OSPF. Specifically, it's OSPF version 2. That's the version on the CCNA blueprint. OSPF version 2 is used to route IP version 4 networks. If you wanted to route IP version 6 networks, you would need to use OSPF version 3. But version 2, that's what's on the blueprint, and that's what we're focusing on in this video. Notice in the topology on screen that we've got three routers, R1, R2, R3, and we've got a couple of OSPF areas. Router R2, that's our ABR, that's the area border router. It's got a couple of link state databases, one for area 0, one for area 1. And we want to configure OSPF on all three of these routers so that they fully exchange route information. To do that, let's begin on router R1. Let's go into global configuration mode. And the first thing I'm going to do is to create an OSPF routing process. To do that, I say router OSPF, and I give a process ID. And this process ID is locally significant. In other words, it does not have to match on my neighboring routers. I'm going to say router OSPF 1. We said that having a router ID might help us better identify a router when we're doing troubleshooting, we're looking at the output of show commands. So just as a good practice, on router R1, I'm going to say that the router ID, say router, hyphen ID, the router ID is 1.1.1.1. Again, I'm not advertising that network. I'm not telling other routers that, hey, I've got the IP address of 1.1.1.1. No, I'm just saying that's my router ID. Now I want both of my interfaces to participate in OSPF. To do that, I'll say network, and for the gigabit 0 slash 1 interface, I'll say 10.1.1.0. But instead of giving a subnet mask, I give a wildcard mask. A wildcard mask is the inverse of a subnet mask. My subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Well, the wildcard mask is going to be 0.0.0.255. How did I get that? Well, I took each octet in the subnet mask, and I subtracted each octet from 255. The subnet mask had a 255 in each of the first three octets, and I subtracted the 255 in those three octets from 255, giving me zero. That means my wildcard mask was 0.0.0. .0 and in the subnet mask, there was a zero in the fourth octet. I subtract a zero from 255. And that's 255. That means my wildcard mask is 0.0.0.255. And I also need to say, in what area does this interface reside that I want to participate in OSPF? And it's in area zero. Now, an important point to make about the network command. A lot of people look at the network command and think, oh, I'm telling OSPF to advertise that network. That's not actually what we're doing. What I'm doing with this network command is I'm saying, if there is an interface that's up, and that interface has an IP address that lives within this address space that I just gave, then I want that interface to participate in this OSPF writing process. And what I mean by the interface participating in the writing process is, I want that interface's network to be advertised by OSPF. So what I did here, I just specified the network and the wildcard mask. But that's not saying advertise this network. It's saying, if there's an interface that's up, whose IP address is within this IP address space, then advertise that interface's network. Let's do our other interface. Interface gigabit 0 slash 2. I'll say network 172.16.1.0. And here, notice we've got a slash 30 subnet mask. That's 255.255.255.252. If I subtract each octet in the subnet mask, from a 255, that's going to give me 0.0.0.3 as my wildcard mask. You see in that fourth octet, I'm subtracting 252 from 255, and it gives me a 3. This interface also belongs to area 0. And as a best practice, as I'm looking at this, I'm realizing that there's no neighbor off of gigabit 0 slash 1. I want the interface to participate in OSPF, but there's no need to send OSPF hello messages out of that interface. I'm not trying to form an adjacency. So what I will do as a best practice is say, I want gigabit 0 slash 1 to be a passive interface. I'll still advertise its network, but I'm not going to send OSPF messages out of that interface because there's no one to talk to. To do that, I'll say, passive hyphen interface gigabit 0 slash 1. And I'm done with my configuration on R1. 
Let's go over to R2 and go into global configuration mode. And I'll say router OSPF 1. And I'll give this a router ID of 2.2.2.2. And I'll say I want the network off of gigabit 0 slash 1 to participate. And I'll give the network address of 172.16.1.0. And it's a slash 30 subnet mask. That means my wildcard mask is going to be 0 .0 0.0.0.3. And R2 is an ABR. It's got one interface in area zero, this one, and another interface in area one. For this one, I'll say this lives in area zero, but I'll say area one for the next network statement. This network statement is for 192.168.1.0 with a wildcard mask of 0 .0 0.0.0.3. And this one lives in area one. No opportunity for a passive interface there because I'm forming OSPF neighborships out of both interfaces. Oh, by the way, it looks like I formed a neighborship. It says I had an adjacency change out of gigabit 0 slash 1. That means I formed a neighborship with R1. Right, let's go over to R3 and complete things. On R3, I'm going to say router. OSPF. And just to make the point that the uh, process IDs don't have to match, I'm going to say I have a process ID of 100 here. That doesn't match my neighbor, but it's still going to work. And I'll say that my router ID is going to be 3.3.3.3. And also, to make a point about the network statement, I said that the network statement did not say advertise this network. It said, here's an IP address space. And if I have an interface that's up, whose IP address belongs to this address space, I want to advertise that interface's network. Just to prove that, check this out. I'm going to say network, and I'm going to give a network address space that encompasses all IP version 4 addresses. I'm going to say 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 with a wildcard mask of all 255s. That's all possible IPv4 addresses. So by definition, all of my up interfaces that have an IP address, they're going to fall within this address space. I've just got to give one network statement, and both of my interfaces are going to participate in OSPF, and their individual networks are going to be advertised. And I'll say area 1. This would not have worked very well on R2 because notice I'm giving one network statement and they both have to belong to the same area. On R2, I needed them to belong to different areas. But here, it works just fine. And we should see a neighborship come up momentarily with R2 and we should start exchanging route information. And we see that we do have a neighborship with R2. Now, as I did on R1, I'm going to make gigabit 0 slash 2 on R3 a passive interface because it's not trying to form a neighborship with anybody else. I'll say passive interface gigabit 0 slash 2. And that's our configuration of OSPF version 2. In our next video, we're going to take a look at the verification of OSPF. We'll see you back for that video in just a moment.